Give the Lord a hand praise if you're glad to be blessed and living in the overflow. God bless you. Have your seats, everybody. So we are going to spend the next couple of weeks really digging deep into this passage of scripture that comes out of 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. This has been and will be a great focus for our preaching and teaching for the next several weeks. A wonderful, wonderful passage that really is coming out of one of Paul's most diverse church communities. He helped to establish the church in Corinth. Uh, is the audience, original audience, for this letter that Paul wrote uh, and, 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 and was using it to encourage the new Christians, those who were curious about what does it mean to follow Jesus in this season and in this moment. And, and one thing about the Church of Corinth that I always love to point out that it was one of the most drama-filled churches in the New Testament. Amen. Lots of drama, lots of folk in there with all kinds of issues and conflicts, a lot of shadiness, relational foibles and, and tendencies and proclivities and all kinds of issues. Drama. Anybody ever been around drama folk? Amen. Any of you ever been those drama folk? Amen. Have no fear. This letter was written to you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ain't it good that they, they just picked a, a, a whole book just to write straight to you? Amen. It should be the letter to McBride. Somebody say amen, right? Drama, drama, but have no fear. God is not afraid of your drama. Somebody say amen. As a matter of fact, I've always believed that God is interested in becoming the director of your drama and, and helping to turn your performance into one of those award-winning performances, that God can take everything that's happening in your life and do something magnificent with it. And that is really one of the great gifts of, I think, this book is that it gives us lots of truths, eternal principles that we can glean from that can help lead us down a path of life and of uh, purposeful living. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is we're going to spend a few moments uh, today and in some days to come. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be a little brief because I want to anoint everyone as we said we would, anoint everyone with oil as we bring our consecration to a close. Uh, so I ask you to hang around. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure we, we get out still at the same time. But I would love to send all of us out just anointed with oil. Oil, uh, as you read in the biblical text and in some of our traditions, particularly many of us who've grown up in some Pentecostal charismatic spaces, the oil of anointing represents the presence of God's spirit. And, and I would just love for us to close our consecration as a congregation with me getting a chance to anoint every one of you and send us out with a special kind of clarity about God's presence being in our lives. Is that all right? Amen. So today's sermon, we're going to try and start talking a little bit about what does it mean for God to ignite within us the God factor that will unleash God's best for us wherever we are on the journey we call life and discipleship. First Corinthians chapter number three. Let's read and let's see what the word of God says. Uh, Paul, again, writing to a collection of believers meeting Regularly, Paul says, and so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. Man, Paul's coming out here telling some folk off, it seems. Saying, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for you are still of the flesh. Amen. Paul keeps reading. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? And so Paul is really kind of giving them a little bit of a riot act. Amen. Reading, reading a little bit of their behavior and trying to kind of Challenged him a little bit. He goes on to say, for when one says, I belong to Paul, 
and another, I belong to Apollos. Are you not merely human? What is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. So isn't that interesting? Amen. Paul is really saying, why are y'all set tripping off of who taught you about Jesus? They all were just fulfilling their assignment. How many of us ever got mixed up between your assignment and you actually being like the source of your assignment? Anybody? Anybody? Amen? Like, you know, you get so caught up in what you're being called to do, you think you were the one that called you in the first place. Tell your neighbor, stay in your lane now. Don't stay in your lane. Man, don't be crossing over into God's lane. I think God's shoulders and your shoulders are a little bit different. Mm hmm Goes on to say, I planted, Paul says, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Keep on reading. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each, for we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So we want to speak today uh, again from this message titled Igniting the God Factor. Igniting the God Factor. Come on, bow your heads with me. Let's pray. God, we want to say thank you for the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God, we ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And God, as we move into this session and preach of preaching, as we close our consecration, I pray that you will send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. May it rest upon me and even the hearers of your word, and we'll thank you, Lord. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I need, I need to, unleash to unleash the God factor. Now, one of the most challenging things that religious people will do and have done is enlist God in your projects, your campaigns, your mess. Mm -hmm. as if God can be domesticated by us. We just, you know, we have enough evidence through history, including some of us last night, <laughs> somebody say amen, where we have claimed that God was rubber stamping or supporting something that we never really slowed down very long enough to ask God, are you in this? Mm hmm Think of the many times you've done stuff and you didn't ask God, God, are you in this? You just went ahead and did it. You're talking about, God, I thank you for hooking me up. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. This is God. I don't know if th that's me. Then you, you know, you get to the end of your mess, and then you like, God, get me out of this mess. Sometimes you and I, we can easily fall victim to making God with the small g confused with the God with the big G. I mean, I, I was thinking of actually titling this sermon, The God Factor versus the God Factor. Again, focusing on the God Factor with the big G that is often at tension with the God factor in our lives with the small g. In the scripture, that's called nothing but idolatry. This, this often confusing 
misplacement of our confidence in a God with a small g that is not able to hold the complexity nor the, 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 the weight of our lives. And yet we are often struggling or confusing the God with the small g with the God factor with the big G. Just think about the few moments where we have had to actually go through situations and then at the end of it we like, God was not in this. <laughs> Anybody ever looked in the rearview mirror and be like, woo, I thought God was in that, but now that I'm out of it, <laughs> I knew the only reason God got in it is to get me out of it. <laughs> Somebody say amen. 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 You see, the God factor with the big G that I want to really emphasize and elevate for us is always attempting to call us out of darkness, dark places, places without light and life. The God factor with the big G is always trying to call us out of those places and into a place where the light of the gospel, the light of God's ways and truths can shine. But too often, so many of us can't tell the difference between the God with the big G and the God with the small G, so we just got to keep going through until you learn how to distinguish between the two. Well, I want to submit to you this morning that part of the reason we do consecration, the reason we engage in these practices, is because we are trying to train our spirit our mind, our senses, to discern between the God with the big G and the God with the little G. Because be clear, both God factors are working for your attention. Both God factors are trying to get you to pledge allegiance to them. But one of these God factors will lead you down a path of destruction and won't give you a way out of it, the other God factor will lead you toward life and will walk with you every step of the way. I love Augustine, one of the North African church fathers, one of my favorite uh, uh, patristics. In, in, in 325, he went through this conversion. And if you read the story of Augustine, his own conversion, he talks about how he uh, had this epiphany, this, this encounter with God that he could not deny. And he began to write on his reflections. He wrote a book. It was about, I don't know, 500 pages or so. And it was called Augustine's Confessions. And I love Augustine because, you know, Augustine was one of those early bishops who was real about his struggle. You know, you meet spiritual folks today and they make you think they don't got no struggles. Amen. But how many of you know all of us got some struggles? And it makes no sense to try to lie like you don't. Amen. Because, you know, if you don't acknowledge your struggles, your struggles will acknowledge you. Somebody say Amen. Augustine, I love this quote because he begins to really make plain what I'm hoping to elevate when we talk about unleashing the God factor. Augustine says, God, you have made us for yourself, but our heart is restless until it finds its rest in you. I want you to think about this, this the, the words of Augustine's confessions that God, you are the one who have created us for yourself, meaning you have a purpose, a plan. You are the one that knows our beginning from our end and our end from our beginning. You are the one that can fill in all of the gaps. That is the God factor, the ability to fill in the gaps of my life. And I know, God, that unless I get in touch with you, I will never be at rest. That is one good way for you and I to begin to test 
God, am I in the right place? Am I unleashing the God factor with the big G versus the God factor with the small G? Because keep it real, many of us have just as much internal conflict as we have external conflict. Many of us are just as much restless within as we can acknowledge the restlessness outside of us. And yet I hear the words of God speaking clearly to you and I as we have consecrated ourselves. God, may I and we get clearer about the God factors desire to put us at rest in your will even while we go through trouble and struggle that may come. I mean, you know, Jesus said it like this, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest for your soul. Could it be that the reason why many of us have no rest for our soul because we are chasing after the wrong God? I mean, think about how the God factor with a small G can get you as much money as you want and you still feel broke. I mean, I remember, you know, my wife drug me kicking and screaming to the financial planner. We was looking at all the money little pennies, a few few dollars we got. And, and I remember when we had half of what we make today. And we was barely making our ends meet. Now we got twice as much as we have and we still barely making our ends meet. And you know, she was telling us some uncomfortable truths. Like, man, you know, mind your business. <laughs> you don't know about me. <laughs> man, these of you sitting across that desk telling me what I should and shouldn't do. You can have more than what you had when you started, but you still feel broke. Or you were lonely. It's like, ooh, when I find my boo, when I find my boo, it's about to be cracking. <laughs> then you get this boo, and you like, ooh, when I get rid of this boo, when I get rid of this boo. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Some of y'all laughing too hard up in here. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep moving. That we are following the wrong God, and that is often why no matter what you have or don't have, rest eludes us because we're looking for rest in the wrong things. This is not to minimize our struggle, but it is to say that there is a rest God brings. God gives, God sustains it, even when I'm in trouble. Like Jesus was on the boat with all of his disciples, and it was a storm outside, and Jesus is asleep down in the bottom of the ship. Everybody else wondering, what is we about to die? Jesus down there asleep? Man, somebody spiked his drink? What's going on? <laughs> Jesus walks up and says, nah, because there's something on the inside of me that stabilizes me. When all the world is sinking sand and upside down, there's a rest you can find in God that'll get you through your season of trial. Pat yourself on the chest and say, I need that rest. I need that rest. Well, part of what I want to submit is the God factor can unleash and catalyze some of this within us. When you take a look at the scriptures that we've read, Paul is clearly trying to help the readers understand, just like many of us need to understand, that we will have all kinds of differences and challenges and struggles. But there is something unique about God's contribution in our lives, that there's something that God adds. Ooh, God is the great additive. Man, God to add something to our lives that no one can replace, no one can substitute. Any cooks up in here, amen. You know, I, 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 my pastor, when I was living with him, 
He was a kidney patient, and, and we couldn't, we couldn't uh, 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 eat salt in any of our foods. And so he had things like Miss Dash. And, and, you know, at first, you know, I was like, this ain't no salt. <laughs> what is this, man? You just, just pouring it on there. Just, just, and I'm like, well, you pour as much as you want, and there ain't going to be no salt. It got so, it got so, so, so interesting that when we ate food with salt, we'd be like, mm, this is delicious. <laughs> How many of you know some of us are using a lot of Ms. Dash in our lives, and we're wondering why it don't give us the same kind of effect. God cannot be outdone by Mrs. Dash. I wish I could preach to somebody up in here today. Why would you substitute the God factor with the big G with the God factor with the small G? And understand, the God factor with the small G is not going to be walking up to you talking about, I'm the God factor with the small G. But the God fact with small G is going to hide himself, herself, wrap itself in the job, in the money, in the fame, in the comfort. And this is the first point of the God factor with the big G. It will expose our growing edges. The God factor with the big G will always expose your growing edges and help you know and appreciate where it is you still got a little ways to grow. I mean, look at what Paul says. Even now you are still not ready. For you are still of the flesh. Even now, we just can't do consecration. Even now. We still not ready because we still dealing with our flesh. I mean, I, you know, was, was, was really dealing over the last six months or so with a terrible neck injury. I've talked about it a few times here and there. And, and it was just such an interesting Interesting challenge for me uh, during the consecration because I, I, I realized that over the six months, I, 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 I had developed a little bit of a depression. And I was just eating lots of comfort food because I couldn't fly nowhere. I couldn't move the way I wanted to move. My neck was hurting. I couldn't sleep. And so along with the medication they were giving me and the food I was eating in January, I was off the medication and off the food. And I started looking at myself and my energy. And I was like, Who's here, Satan? What is going on? And not having my comfort food, not having my medications, exposed some things that I had to confront. But not to condemn me, not to further paralyze me, but to help me get stronger, to become more mature. I had to look at my busyness and ask questions about the God factor with the small g that was telling me that I had to be busy all the time in order to be effective. The God factor with the small G that would have me looking at my colleagues and my comrades at all the stuff that they were doing rather than focusing on where I needed to learn and grow. Have you ever been around some folk and you debriefing meetings and you know you're sitting around and we're gonna debrief a meeting and, and, and the brother's like, well, you know, he when he was up there, you know, he totally just bombed his presentation. And then you know, you, you know, oh, and, and y'all, y'all was 10 minutes late. So yeah, that, you know, that's my debrief. And then when they get to them, you know, they, they can't, they're not conscious about nothing that they've done. Anybody ever been a gruesome folk like that? Man, I have, amen. And I, I just be waiting for my turn. <laughs> You're like, oh, I got something for you to help, you know, give you some smelling salt, praise God. 
Sometimes we are so unaware of our growing edges that we'll allow our fixation on others' weaknesses to obscure the places where God is trying to shore us up. Some of the questions that I want to lift up coming out of this passage then, Paul is very clear when he talks to them about, I want to feed you some solid food, but you can only stay on this milk. You know, we hadn't had a baby in, you know, six, seven years. Our, our daughters, once they got off that baby food and stuff, we was happy. We was like, oh, thank God, it's, we got we to keep moving on. Now, how many know some of us are still stuck on the milk portions of our lives. God's trying to give you something a little more substantive, but you can't get past the milk. God is trying to move you beyond your flesh into a spiritual set of practices, but you can't get beyond that. So here's some questions I'd like for you to think about. Are there places in your life that can only take milk rather than solid food? I mean, God in the text helps us to see what God is talking about when God talks about your growing edges. Jealousy, quarreling. I mean, it's clear to me that some of our growing edges around human hierarchy and race and class. If you are a racist, guess what? You got a growing edge. If you are a misogynist, a sexist, a homophobe, you have a growing edge. If you can't treat your partner right, if you can't love your children, if you can't work across lines of difference, whether you agree with them or not, the quarreling and the jealousy, the scripture says, is a sign of your growing edge. The God factor helps to fill those gaps so you can learn to love the unlovable. Serve those who get on your nerves and at least learn to have proper boundaries so you're not always being drugged down into the muck and the mire of their dysfunction. I hope and pray, child of God, that you and I will lean into our growing edges. Why? Because those growing edges can keep you and I from unleashing the God factor. Second thing that the scripture lifts up, worth of, worthy of our reflection, it challenges the God factor, challenges our loyalties. Somebody holler, challenges, challenges. Misplaced. misplaced, loyalties. Again, in the scripture, it's real clear. You find some of them tripping off of who they were saved by or ministered to by. And, and part of what I love in this, this, this point, it says, when one says, I belong to Paul, another, I belong to Apollos, are you merely human is the text. I want you to appreciate that when it challenges your loyalties, it is actually attempting to remind you that we are more than human. Meaning that there are all kinds of descriptions and all kinds of ways that you and I are often defined in the culture and in the society. And these definitions are often causing you and I to fall into divisions and into descriptions that cannot give a full account of who we are. Anybody ever been in a place where you were constantly being defined in a way that you know was not your full definition? Anybody? Anybody? And you kind of had to had to correct a few folks. Like, okay, I don't know if you if you just being petty or not, but I'm gonna I'm gonna help you to understand. I am more than that. Some of us have gotten used to defining ourselves or others by our worst mistakes. And you have to stand up and say, I am more than that. Some of us have, have, have been used to being in certain neighborhoods or certain categories of race, gender, sexual orientation, p 
political parties, and you had to stand up in some place and say, those may be some of the descriptions, but I am more than that. I hear that you and I must allow the God factor to help us be more than these descriptions that can't give a full account of who you and I are. Understand that when the God factor is unleashed within us, they don't diminish or erase your distinctions. They just ensure that your distinctions do not become tools for division. Of course that we are socially situated. Amen. But the scripture says that when we come into the way of Jesus, we are no more Jew, no more Greek, no more rich, no more poor, no more male, no more female, but all of us. Somebody say all of us. All of us are one in Christ. God erases the divisions and the enmity, the tension between us in our differences without making us all the same. And it is only the God factor that can help me get along with some of these folk out here who are intent on erasing who the God created you and I to be beautifully. God says if you unleash the God factor with the big G, I'll make, help you make your enemies be at peace with you. Do I have anybody that knows what it's like to all of a sudden have peace with your enemies without you even, like I, 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 I swore but now and I wasn't gonna be cool with you no more, but all of a sudden you came up to me smiling and all of a sudden I came to you smiling. Why, because God helped me to be at peace with you and you with me. The God factor allows you and I to be reminded that we are more than these labels. We are more. Pastor Samuel said, Chester said, I am more. I am more than how my fraternity or sorority describes me. Somebody holler, I am more. I am more than how my neighborhood describes me. Somebody holler, I am more. I am more than how my parents have described me. Somebody say, I am more. I am more than how my culture or this country or those who are oppressors or those who are violators and abusers describe me. Holler, I am more. I am who God has declared me to be. How many of you know when God put God's spirit inside of you, you are more than your worst mistake. You are more than the limitations they try to place around you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Give your neighbor a high five and tell him you are more than this. So don't be set tripping. On these identities, labels, put that question up there. Where, 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 where God says that you are more than this, how does that stack up to the labels, descriptions, loyalties, and associations that are ascribed to you? Where is God trying to help you expand beyond your limitations? Could it be coming out this consecration? God's trying to blow some of us up. Give us a little bit more so we can be more than what they say we are. You can do more than what they say you can do. You can become more than what they said you would become. God wants you to become more than your human limitations. If I have anybody here that knows what it's like to, to graduate to the next level and say, God, I thank you. That thing tried to shrink me, but God, you kept expanding me. That thing tried to cripple me, but God, you stood me straight up on my legs and straightened my back. That thing tried to put me out of commission, but God, somehow, some way, you helped me connect to a power I did not even know was there. God wants you to know, child of God, don't limit yourself to the human capacities. 
when God has put the power of the eternal, uncreated one within you. God before you. God says, I can do all things. What does all things mean? Everything. There ain't nothing you can't do. There ain't nowhere you can't go with God on your side. That's why I love the scripture that says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think that God is with you. And you better unleash the God factor that empowers you in ways that no other human being ever could. Last thing the scripture says is that it helps you and I ignite our growth. Somebody say ignite growth. I love how the scripture in here says that Paul may plant, Apollos may water, but it is God that gives the increase. Lord, I'm here to tell you, don't you dare mix up where your increase comes from. I know you get your check from your job, but when you put your check in the, in the bank, you ought to say, God, I just want to say thank you. I know you think that your grades are good because you stay up all night studying in the library, but when you get your A, your B, and sometimes a C, you better say, God, I just want to say thank you. I know you think that your family is getting better because you going to the therapist and you spending more time quality time with your family members but when your family gets put back together the way you've always wanted don't you dare give credit to your therapist uh, before you tell God Lord I just want to say thank you uh, I know you getting a promotion on your job uh, and I know that you got you a nice new car uh, and you got you some new credit uh, and you can get you a new house uh, but don't you dare put your key in the ignition uh, and don't you dare put your key in the door of your new house uh, and think it's because you worked on your credit uh, and you saved a few of your dollars uh, but before you get in that new thing uh, you ought to lift up your hands and say God I just want to say thank you I know your mind has been causing you all kind of pain and now you feel like you're coming out of the fog but don't you dare think that it's because of your self care practices don't you dare think it's because you took a sabbatical but before you start giving credit to anybody else you ought to say God I just want to say thank you because it is God who gives you the increase it is God who helps you take the next step it is God who gives you the power you didn't know you had and if God can give you more then guess what you ought to do more to give God the glory you ought to do more to give God the praise I will bless the Lord at all times because God has been that good to me. Shout hallelujah, somebody. God's giving you more. So it's time to do more. God's giving you power. So it's time to be powerful. God's giving you love. So it's time to love somebody. Shout hallelujah. God wants to ignite increase. And guess what? When God gives you increase, you are now tasked to give it away. Don't you ascribe capitalistic, predatory, exploitive impulses to the God who blesses us with more. God says in the word, I'm blessing you so you can in turn be a blessing. If it was, if it was Paul who was increasing you, maybe you would keep it to yourself. If that blessing came from another human origin, Maybe you would keep it to yourself. But God says, listen, 
I am the one who gives increase. Don't operate from a scarcity mindset. Afraid that if you give away what God has given you, that God can't fill the gap. The gap is always filled by the God factor. Oh, somebody give the Lord a hand praise. When you get in your groups, and they're working on reconciliation among differences. Don't be set tripping on your group leader. Thinking that it's coming from them. They can't add to you that which you need to be added. They are vessels and vehicles. Just like you are a vessel and a vehicle. Amen. Let God give you the increase. Come on, let's stand to our feet, everyone. Grab the hand of someone that is near you. Let's take a few moments to invite God to bring increase into our lives. God, I'm touching somebody today that needs to be reminded. Hallelujah. They need to be reminded, Lord, that they need the God factor. They don't need the God with the small G that's running a muck through their life. But they need the God with the big G, the God of all creation. The spirit of the living God. The God that never fails. God, I pray today, Lord, that you will, even as you bring this God factor to its fullest impact, expose these growing edges in my brother and my sister. Expose it. Not for the purpose of condemnation, but for the purposes of healing, of growth. Expose it, God, with those who can be in accountable, healthy relationships. And they can take the next step. God, I pray that the loyalties that try to make us less than human or would try to only keep us human, that God, we will remember that you've created us to be more than human. You've turned us into supernatural expressions of your love, your joy, your peace, your power. God, that even when we're in the streets, in our homes, at our jobs, God, you are moving in a supernatural way. Squeeze their hand real quick and say, God, make them more than human. Make them more than the worst thing they've done. Make them more than the mistake. Make them more than their limitations. Make them more than human. And God, ignite some things. Lift your hands right where you're standing. Ignite, increase. Lift your hands, ignite. Somebody say, ignite it in me, God. Say it again. Ignite it in me, God. Ignite increase. Ignite power. Ignite anointing. Ignite victory. Ignite healing. Ignite it. Expand me, God. Help me to have the capacity to love and, 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 and heal and to be stronger. Expand and ignite it in me, Lord. Because there are more things you need to do. And I can only do it, God, if you make me larger and greater and greater.